What's up today in this video I'm talking about is BJJ safe for men over 40? Giving you my experience, make sure you stick around. What's up guys, my name is Chad. I am a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've been practicing for just over six years now. I have a full time career, wife and kids. So I share my experiences balancing life and Jiu Jitsu. That's what I do on this channel. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure you click that subscribe button below. Now the question of BJJ being safe for men over 40 comes up quite often in, in BJJ forums and different conversations. And I've, I've certainly wondered that myself before I started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in my 30s. Um, and sometimes I still wonder that, is it safe for men over 40? So I wanna share a few things in this video. One thing I'm gonna share with you is some statistics on um, injuries in BJJ. I'm also gonna share with you my experiences with these types of in injuries and what I've experienced with my own injuries and how I've overcome that and what to do prevent and also treating some types of injuries. So, and then I'm also gonna to talk to you about, at the very end, I'll talk about one of the biggest types of injuries that happens in this sport. Starting out with a little bit of stats. So I did a quick Google search and found that the BJJ injury ratio is 36.1 per 1,000 athlete exposures, which they're saying is the lowest in martial arts. So that's 36.1 injuries out of 1,000 athlete exposures to some type of injury. Not sure they got that data, but it's out there on Google. Doesn't mean it's right, it's just something I found and thought it was interesting and wanted to share that with you. And to be honest, when we're talking about injuries, I can honestly say that injuries, most of the injuries, actually all of the injuries I've encountered in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu were something, it was something that I did. Like either I didn't tap fast enough, I thought I could get out of a particular submission, rolled the wrong way, did something incorrectly. Long story short, I caused an injury to myself. It wasn't because of some sort of, uh, you know, some guy going ape crazy on me and just, you know, destroying a ligament, a tendon or a muscle. It wasn't any of that. It was usually myself doing something very stupid or not knowing how to get out of a particular submission. So usually it's something I did myself. Now, I'm not gonna say that's the case for all injuries. I know some folks actually get injured because they rolled with a guy that has something to prove, some sort of ego that he had to, you know, prove that he was the baddest person in the gym and yeah, and then injured another, another person. Now, have I ever seen that before? Not really, I mean, I've never really seen someone that I've seen videos of people like that but I've never seen it in real life I've never seen someone at a, at a school I went to that was so caught up in themselves that they just you know had to just go crazy on someone now I have seen and I have experienced like certain types of folks that were very nice but when they rolled with you they were very rough you know, want to throw and throw you around that kind of thing and they're usually white belts so you have to encounter that sometimes and you have to be cognizant of it listen if you're uncomfortable with someone or rolling with someone you're in control you can say listen uh yeah i appreciate it but no i'm not gonna roll with you if that's what you want to do i mean you're an adult you're a man you don't have to do it i think sometimes you know we have a bit of an ego some are we're type a personalities right we want to roll we want to win but not at the expense of getting injured. So I've rolled to folks that will want to muscle through everything. And uh, I guess that's uh, just some of the, it's just the name of the game. You got to deal with it sometimes. Um, but don't be afraid to say, hey, you know, maybe you're just getting into jujitsu and you're um, not in shape or you don't have a clue what you're doing and you roll with another white belt that's strong, more athletic, younger, and they're going crazy on you. Just, hey, it'd be, it's, it's okay to stop and say, hey, I'm going to sit over here while you, uh, while you get out that pent up frustration on your own because I'm not dealing with it. Don't be afraid to do that. So really there are two types of injuries that I wanna talk about. There are muscle injuries, and this is the first one we're gonna cover. And listen, I, and you might see me glance over my computer screen. I have it up on the screen here because I don't wanna forget anything. But muscle injuries are, you know, the, the good thing about muscle injuries, they, they do heal rather quickly. Now, I'm not saying that they, that muscle injuries aren't serious. They can be quite serious, but usually they're gonna be something that's sore muscles. Maybe you gotta tear somewhere in a muscle, that might take longer. And so it's gonna take some time to heal, but not as long as the second type of injury we're gonna talk about. Now, I know maybe I'm talking about injuries because uh, one thing, the, the question does come up a lot. The other thing is I was rolling with a white belt the other day. He's a really strong white belt, great person, great guy. And uh, I was submitting an arm bar. And, or I was getting on, on bar submission on this this guy and he and he went to muscle out of it and, and sort of like gave and then went really hard and I think he tore his uh, pec muscle or something. Anyway, I've checked up on him. He seems to be doing all right, but I think there's gonna be um, some time in there healing. That really frustrated me a little bit because maybe I should have let go of the submission. Frustrated me because I'm a purple belt, he's a white belt. Maybe I should have been, have the have more of an insight of like, look, maybe I should just let this go. So I'm more frustrated with myself than I am him. I'm worried about him, you know, I wanna make sure he's all right um, because you know he's just now getting into jiu-jitsu. The last thing I want is to be the reason for someone laying out of jiu-jitsu. So anyway, I've done some reflection on that and uh, I'll be more cognizant of that in the future rolling with white belts but all in all he's all right 
but it did sort of spark me thinking about, hey, injuries in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which probably is the reason for this video. To make sure you tap fast, tap often. That's sort of a mantra I live by. Now we talk about muscle injuries. Some of the things I've done in the past, and I know I have videos on this with ice packs or certain slings and things you can buy that hold the ice packs in place, especially with like shoulders and back. I like to treat uh, muscle injuries with ice. Um, I'm by in no way a doctor, so that's my disclaimer here. Go out and seek your own physician's advice on this. I'm just telling you these are the things I've done. I also use Epsom salt. I'll put links in the description below to the ice packs that I use. Uh, I bought them off of Amazon. They work out pretty well. It's a prevention. Listen, when you're trying to prevent muscle injuries, I find that uh, always a good stretching routine is going to help, right? Whenever I feel like I'm in a good stretching routine, I feel like I'm, I'm more equipped to handle some of the pretzel-like moves I get put in in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, so stretching is always important. The other thing is exercise. Whenever I combine exercise with stretching, I always feel stronger in Jiu-Jitsu. It makes sense, right? Because you're stretching, you're getting you know, weightlifting. I talked about the 5x5 before. I'll put a link in the description below to that video. The 5x5 is great for building muscle, but I've also incorporated some uh, rings that have mounted to my wall over here. They're Olympic rings. They're mounted to a pull-up bar. Um, I think I maybe did a video on that in the past as well. I'll put a link in the description below to those items on Amazon if you want to check them out. But I've been using those, incorporating the pull-up bar, my Olympic rings, and then also brought in some kettlebells. Now, if you're looking for a great YouTube channel that talks about how to use, you know, use kettlebells, this guy, um, To The Core, is his YouTube channel, To The Core, C-O-R-E. I'll put a link in the description below. He has a great YouTube channel where he does tons of kettlebell workouts and he's trying to grow his channel. I think he has just over a thousand subscribers now, but he's growing. So make sure you check him out. He seems like a really cool guy. He also has an Instagram account called The Russian Assassin. The Russian Assassin, I'll also put a link down in the description below to his Instagram account. But over there, he also goes through a lot of kettlebell workouts and kettlebell routines. And to me, I love watching those routines because I can kind of pick up and steal what I want to steal and see what works for me. So I'll put those in the description below as well. Links to all of his, uh, his uh, social media accounts. Now, while I'm on YouTube videos, I do want to talk about another channel uh, that you might want to follow. If, you're, if you like listening to BJJ content, but you don't want to hear F-bombs dropped all the time, there's a great uh, couple of guys I want you to follow. There. It's called A Father's Role. A Father's Role, a little play on words there. But uh, these guys do jiu-jitsu. They talk about all things jiu-jitsu. Uh, they're Christian, so you know, you're not going to hear F-bombs drop. Not that Christians don't drop F-bombs sometimes, but you know these guys don't do that. So I like listening to good jiu-jitsu content with my kids. These guys um, have good jiu-jitsu content without all of the stuff I don't want my kids to hear, at least from me anyway. They're going to get that in public schools anyway. Go check those guys out. I'll put a link down in the description below. They have a YouTube channel and they have an Instagram account as well as a podcast. I'll have links to all of that. Check them out. A Father's Rule. Uh, they're really good guys. Now, when we talk about the more serious types of injuries, th this gets into like ligaments, tendons, and nerves. Now, fortunately, I haven't really had any of these injuries except for my shoulder. I did get a tear in my shoulder. Um, I let it heal on its own. Um, I, yeah, did I do some sort of uh, exercises and things like that with a little lighter weight? Yes, it took a long time to heal, over a year. I know some of you have asked about that in the comment sections on my other videos, and I do appreciate the concern there. I'll say that the 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 mobility of it is pretty, like it popped right then. The mobility is there. I, I still get a little queasy or I get a little uh, anxious if somebody's like putting a submission on that side of my body, I'll tap. In fact, I'll do that anyway on both of these shoulders. Neither one of them are that great. Um, but that doesn't come. That didn't come from jujitsu. That came from just years of heavy lifting before I found about found out about jujitsu. And so I used to lift really heavy. I used to be 217 pounds. You know, just powering through like 315 multiple reps. And it's had a toll on my shoulders. I mean, when you're doing 100 pound dumbbells for um, dumbbell presses, it takes a toll on your shoulders. When I was younger, I didn't think about warm ups. I just went in, snatched weight, and started doing weight. I was a knucklehead. So anyway, I'm paying for it now. Don't be a knucklehead. In any case, the shoulder is getting better and it's getting some mobility there. When we talk about uh, ligaments, hyperextending your knee, like. This happens, tearing your ACL, uh, those types of things. I'm not going to talk about treatment here because that's something you need, definitely need to go see an orthopedic for or a doctor. Uh, I'm certainly not a doctor. So, but, you know, tearing your ACL is very serious, getting stacked and causing damage to your back. Now, if you've ever done jiu-jitsu and somebody's stacking you, whether you're trying to pull a triangle on them and they're trying to stack you to get out of the triangle, once my lower back lifts off the floor, I have a big problem with that. So I'll, I'll, I'll abandon the technique and go back to some sort of neutral position. The reason for that is, is that uh, some folks aren't that heavy, but 
some some guys in the academy or at school really know how to use their pressure well. And when my back comes, my lower back sort of rolls off the mat. I felt a twinge, a twing, uh, something back there before where it, didn't, it, it was definitely nerve related. And so I'll keep my lower back attached to the floor in those types of moves. And if it starts to roll up, I'll, I'll abandon the position. Um, I'm not saying you have to, this is what I do. So I'm sharing my experience. Again, tap early, tap often, and don't let ego sideline you, right? You, you know, egos, your ego can, can really sideline you. It's something that you know, you need to overcome in jujitsu, and it takes time, but don't go in with too much of an ego. Other types of injuries are ears, fingers, and ribs. So my fingers, I get injured um, quite often. And, and when I say often, I just mean that my grips, I'm trying to get better at using my grips wisely, but you know, using my grips often causes my fingers to um, swell up. And so I've been using, one thing I found that works is ice. Ice works really well. I'll literally come home and pack my hands in ice, and it does bring down the swell and it helps out a lot. So, you know, try not to take medicine and things like that all the time. Using ice does help bring down the swelling. Also taping my fingers before jujitsu. I'll post a link down in the description below to that video. I did a video a while back on how to tape your fingers. There's tons of videos out there about that, but I'll, I'll put the one out there I did. It does help with um, controlling the bend in the fingers so I can't overextend or over bend my fingers when I'm doing grips in Jiu Jitsu. So that helps out a lot as well. But ice has been revolutionary for me. So I do what the ice is. I just, this is one of the ice packs that I have. It's, see how it's, you can move it around. I'll slap it around my hand like this and I have like a sling I'll wrap around it and just kind of like let my hand sit there for a little while. And it's not too cold. If it is, I'll put like a rag or something in between the layers but it really takes the swelling down and makes my fingers uh, feel better. They do sell actually gloves on Amazon where um, you can put gloves on their ice pack gloves. I thought about checking those out. If you check those out and they work, let me know. Now, something else I've been taking, I just started taking it not too long ago and it seems to be helping. It could be a placebo, I don't know. But Jocko, this Jocko Joint Warfare. I've been taking this. This is supposed to be for your, obviously, joint warfare for your joints. So I've been taking this along with their Super Krill. Now, I've done some research on Krill. I'm not going to share it in this video because this video is getting long already. But Krill actually is supposed to be like fish oil on steroids, if you will. So i um, never heard of it before until I saw this pop up on Origins website. So if you want to go check those out, I'll put a link down in the description below. Obviously you get 10% off uh, if you use that link down in the description. And uh, yeah, I do get a small 10% kickback on that if you use it. it. Doesn't affect your price at all, it just helps me out with the channel. So I do appreciate everyone who's done that. People have been buying, I mean, there's been a lot of folks buying geese through my link uh, in the description. So I really appreciate that. 10% is a big, like somebody commented one time, like 10% is not anything. Oh, well 10%, uh, most of the folks I'm, I'm seeing are saving like 30, 40 bucks on their, on their orders. So, I mean, maybe you got 30 or 40 bucks to throw away, my friend, but I don't have that. So I do appreciate everyone who's taking advantage of the 10% uh, off deal there. Cause I did, I reached out to Origin and said, can you offer the discount? Anyway, so uh, yeah, check these, uh, check these supplements out. I think these have been helping. Again, it could be placebo. I don't know, but either way, if it's a placebo, I do feel like my joints are a little bit better. So now when we talk about statistics, uh, I did find some really cool statistics about injuries. So if you head over to bjjsuccess.com, I found some really cool statistics. I'm gonna share these on the screen here. And I found that, <laughs> my wife was just walking to the mailbox and I was checking her out. Whew. I'm a happy man. Anyway, so according to the study, uh, there was a study done out of out of 5,022 match exposures, there were 46 injuries. That means only 46 injuries out of 5,022 match exposures. And on the screen here, you can see there was elbow, uh, 14, knee, seven, ribs, seven. Ribs are, yeah, I've seen a lot of folks get uh, damaged ribs. But you can see the the numbers here uh, as far as the stats go, and it's not not that bad, right? I don't think that's that bad given the uh, quantity of matches. So now they took a look also at the at uh, the BJJ practitioners, um, and said, look, out of you know at your schools, I think they did this through some sort of questionnaires, and they said, you know, what kind of injuries are you seeing? And what the BJJ practitioners were saying is that some of the top injuries they found were now they vary a little bit from study to study. But in 2019, they found that the top three injuries were knees, shoulders, and rib cage. 2018, they said shoulders and knees are most common. Um, and these are among 180. Here's a takeaway. You got to pick your poison, right? Whether you think BJJ, a lot of people want to say, oh, BJJ is too dangerous. I, somebody commented on one of my videos and said that that's why you don't see a lot of older people in BJJ because it's so 
damaging to your joints. And, and I, I just thought that was baffling because I was like, dude, I don't know what you're looking at, but I see a lot of folks in, that are older in, in, in the BJJ community. So anyway, I don't know what these folks are watching, but in any case, you got to pick your poison, right? Whether you're running, uh, doing judo, boxing, weight training, whatever it is you're doing, you could even be just sitting on the couch, right? They're all going to have consequences. So the point is to pick your poison, get off the couch and do something that's going to get you moving, whatever fits your lifestyle, right? And so that's what I do. And for me, it's BJJ. Pick your poison, get off the couch. Don't make excuses. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one.